Time now for the morning rush. Albuquerque Public Schools is sticking with remote learning for now. At last night's uh, meeting, school board members ultimately decided that students will start hybrid learning if more teachers get vaccinated or if the case count in Bernalillo County goes down. The district is working on ways to identify students who may need some extra help and bring them back into the classroom. Erica. We're seeing messy road conditions all across the middle and upper Rio Grande Valley from Chimayo to Santa Fe, all the way down I 25 to Albuquerque. That snow still going, and it's been hovering in place, but it is starting to make a little bit of a trek to the east, which means we'll start to see some clearing as we go through the end of the morning commute. This morning, the state is asking a judge not to dismiss the case against Fabian Gonzalez, a suspect in the Victoria Martins case. Gonzalez's attorneys are arguing that connecting him to a recent Amber Alert could sway public opinion, possibly tainting a jury. The state argues that Gonzalez was never involved in the children's abduction. A former judge filed an ethics complaint saying Democratic House Speaker Brian E. Golf will benefit from a bill that he sponsored. House Bill 4 would allow people to sue public bodies like city and county governments. As an attorney who handles civil rights cases, some worry that E. Golf could make money off of this. His attorney says there's no evidence to show that he could profit from the bill. We're getting an idea this morning of when more people will receive their COVID vaccine. Next in line is Group 1B, which includes teachers and people 75 and older. Well, the state says that supply is still holding us back. The good news here is that a bigger vaccine shipment than normal is expected, with 72,000 doses coming. Says they're trying to get free dog houses to those in need. The department says there are getting an increase in calls from people concerned for dogs outside. If you're in need of a dog house, you can call the East Side or West Side Shelter. You can also donate. If you have a newer, gently used dog house that you can drop off, they will take it. And the Metro Threat Index is high this morning. We are seeing some very snowy road conditions, mainly east of I 25. Areas west of I 25 are looking clearer. A man is behind bars this morning accused of murder. Investigators say 25 year old Jeffrey Contreras of Roswell shot up the RV that Anthony Vasquez was living in on Monday. Contreras was arrested by U.S. Marshals. They believe Contreras shot the 57 year old to prevent him from going to police about a murder both men were involved in. An AFR truck is back with the department this morning after someone stole it. A crew was working when they realized that their rescue truck was gone. State police tracked it down near Grants. Now, the woman driving the truck took off running after an officer used a spike strip to stop it. She was later arrested. New this morning, the city of Albuquerque will now pay $15 million for the Gibson Medical Center. The Albuquerque Journal reports their attempted purchase of the property last year triggered a lawsuit challenging the sales price. But a spokesperson for the city says they've reached a settlement. The city plans to make it a gateway center for the homeless. This morning, 160 rabbits found recovered in a hoarding situation. They are now up for adoption. Earlier this month, Bernalillo County Animal Services, Care Services rather, found the rabbits in caged areas outside of the South Valley home. The county's Animal Care and Resource Center is still sheltering most of them. For details on how to adopt, go to always on at krqe.com. Looking ahead for you, a confirmation hearing is set for Interior Secretary nominee Deb Holland. Holland will appear before the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee on Tuesday. If confirmed, the New Mexico Congresswoman would become the first Native American in a presidential cabinet. A local restaurant, La Salita, is giving back to the community by giving out free meals during the pandemic. It's called Operation Kindness. Every $10 donated is to give one person a free meal. Managers say that anyone can reach out. It doesn't have to just be someone financially hit by the pandemic. They also want to help frontline workers or anyone in need of a pick-me-up. Erica. Now let's get a look at that morning drive. There are several crashes and disabled vehicles to report. I-40 East at Rio Grande Boulevard, the left lane is blocked. I-25 North at Cesar Chavez, it's stop and go traffic. I-40 West between Wyoming and Louisiana, also looking at some messy conditions there. And I-40 West at Lomas, expect delays, use caution, and drive slow this morning. Finally, an Albuquerque dancer is on a mission this morning to bring more inclusion to the world of dance. Emily Wiederholt has spent four years interviewing dancers with disabilities. She's compiled her interviews into a book discussing disability in dance. She says she wants to challenge preconceived notions of who can dance. Wiederholt says the book will be published within the next year. Welcome back. On this date, February 18th of 2016, there was a strong upper level storm system that was passing across the state. And Kachina Peak reported 66 mile per hour wind gusts. Rotellon reported 58 mile per hour wind gusts, but luckily no damage was reported.
Time now for the five packs. At number five, an Albuquerque dancer wants to bring more inclusion to the world of dance. Emily Wiederholt has spent the past four years interviewing professional dancers with disabilities from all over the world. Now, she's compiled her interviews into a book discussing disability and dance. Wiederholt says that she wants to challenge preconceived notions of who can dance. Number four, a local restaurant is giving back to the community by giving out free meals during the pandemic. La Salita launched Operation Kindness after COVID hit. Managers say the operation started with a $500 donation from a customer. They use every $10 donated to give one person a free meal. At number three, the NMAA says that they are waiting on seven school districts, including APS, to decide if student athletes will compete in sports. However, for APS, this seems unlikely. Currently, schools have to be in the hybrid learning model for at least 14 days before being eligible to start playing. Because APS is not moving into a hybrid model right now, it appears that they are not eligible at this time. That brings us to number two. After an hours long meeting, the Albuquerque Public School Board decided to stay with remote learning, saying more than half of its teachers don't feel comfortable coming back. They say they want to see more teachers get vaccinated or if Bernalillo County moves into the green. If those changes do happen, the board says students can begin a hybrid model. And at number one, we do have that winter weather continuing out there. And I think you saw the image just uh, two stories ago, but it was I 25 at the Sunport showing heavy traffic, snow on the entrance and exit ramps. And uh, that snow is starting to lighten up. So that is the good news. But I will continue tracking those messy conditions across the rest of the state as the storm moves out coming up at 7 o'clock.